tell me what is the state of the creative culture in Zimbabwe? You know, uh, I don't think anyone has actually done it like a, like a comprehensive study of like what the ecosystem looks like. Uh, but what we do know is that um, you know Zimbabwe is a, like a rich tradition of you know yeah, creativity, like from our uh, like our ancestors, like everything about our culture is you know creative. You, know, you just have to look at Great Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, to see that everything about our culture has, has been like embedded in like some sort of creativity. So uh, currently where we are, I think we creatives are, are, are feeling uh, at, the, at the wrong end of the economic crunch. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, they suffer the most when the economy suffers. So um, companies tend to cut their public relations budget, their marketing budgets first before they before they do anything else and then that tends to affect the photographers the videographers the you know the designers everyone everyone suffers because no one is you know tapping into their talent so i think they are yeah they are at a at a, at a very difficult position they're in a very difficult position i think uh but i think there's also a new wave of you know freelancers that have come up that are right. not necessarily aligned to an agency or you know, a company or anything that right. are born digital, that work online, that, you know, use tools like freelancer.com, Fiverr, uh, and, you know, are making money from outside the country and, you know, literally, you know, uh, supplying creative work to companies in South Africa, UK, USA, uh, animators who are doing portions of movies from, from Zimbabwe and, and, and doing amazing things. And I think we've we're kind of like following the same trend that's happening around the world where, you know, the big advertising agencies and the big studios uh, are starting to become less relevant. Mm. Uh, and the small guys, the small creative studios are the ones that are taking up the, the bulk of the market. Uh, and you see, you see companies like, uh, I don't know, like the one example that I have is this animation studio called Alula. Uh, which which I'm sure you've seen some of the adverts because they've done yep. stuff for Zoe and yep. uh, Econet and it's just a, a small team, a very small team, but they do exceptional work in terms of like you know the 3D 3D animation and it's and traditionally that you would have needed uh, to be part of a huge company right. five years ago to produce something like that. Right. But with the advancement of having powerful computers, strong internet. Uh, and better software in terms of animation you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need 20 people to do that anymore right. uh, that can be done with smaller teams so yeah so i think we're going we're going we are the, the the industry is advancing to where smaller teams are actually better like right. uh, than huge corporates yeah. so you'll see less and less mm -hmm. giant companies from the creative industry yeah okay so with that would you say there's uh, collaborations within the creative industry in Zimbabwe or is it it's mainly just the one person just doing everything you know just like a jack of all trades if, if I'm into videography then I'm the camera guy I'm the editor I'm the director and I'm also the producer of it would you say these collaborations with the smaller teams that are currently there right now or is it a mix of both I think it's a mix of both but I think that there, there are actually more collaborations happening now than there would have than would have happened previously because now instead of having a uh a company do, hiring an editor and a videographer and an animator and keeping them on their payroll. Yeah. Companies are literally, it's a briefcase company or like a, someone working from home and when they require certain services, that's when they hire out uh, a videographer and editor you know, to complement whatever they're doing. Yeah. But they don't. They are not necessarily keeping those people on staff twenty four seven. It's like as and when. So I think more collaborations are happening, and you find that uh, more people have are working on different projects. So you work on a project with this organization today. You're working on a commercial project next week. You're working on a uh, civil society project, and it actually helps you. You know, figure out oh oh there's a there's a different market. There are different right. things happening, and you actually end up. If you are if you are in that space, you actually end up having more exposure than someone who some someone who you know it just narrows their, their 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 focus to just corporate work. So yeah, I think currently we're having more collaborations happening. Yeah. Okay, and with that, does it come with 
the creatives coming up with their own content or are they merely just focusing on the bread and butter and feeding the, <clears throat> the corporates, doing their advertisements, doing their design works, doing their animations? Do you think creatives right now in Zimbabwe are at a point where they are creating their own content? I think you uh, in Zimbabwe you can't you can't you can't you can't just, you can't just survive on content. I'm gonna I'm gonna use Bustop as a as an example. Bustop right. creates content and they're yes. based yeah. But I'm sure they like for for their for half their content. I'm sure they they have commercial clients and stuff. So you have yeah. you just have to spread yourself uh, across the board. Yeah. And I know creatives who you know who do. Uh, videos, uh, corporate videos, but then end up also doing we- uh, weddings on the weekends because right. you really can't let any client go, and you, a- any dollar that comes into your pocket is yeah. is valuable. So I think uh, that is actually the biggest challenge right now because there's very little money coming from uh, corporates, so right. that has to be shared across you know a lot of creatives. So. If you think of like the companies on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange that are actually hiring creatives or that have a budget for creatives, very few. It's mm-hmm. mainly Delta and Ignite, and yeah. then, you start, <laughs> then, you start, then you start scratching <laughs> the bottom of the barrel, and then so yeah. everyone else is, has very limited uh, budgets. Yeah. So that to survive, you, you have to go into the weddings and the mm. three old birthday parties. Do you think that also has a bearing in terms of how we are? Uh, minimizing our own creativity because when you're doing a wedding there's so much creativeness you can put into it mm-hmm. so you're not really thinking about okay how about if we, if we move this over there in terms of photography you're limited that particular moment where it's like okay now it's time to go and take photos yeah. that's literally the only point in time where you can be creative do you think just doing the mundane or not the mundane but then doing the corporate work <laughs> is that stifling our creative i I think it depends on the creative. I think the, the weddings and the three year old birthday parties are important. <laughs> are important. They're important. <laughs> they're important. <laughs> they're important baseline. They're like the right. like that is like the baseline. This is yeah. like the standard mm-hmm. the jobs yeah. that uh, that will be coming in. Yeah. But I think if you get stuck there and you, that yeah. becomes your the level that you just stay at, yeah. then you're in trouble. I think most creatives start off doing weddings and three old birthday parties mm-hmm. and then they start to think of, oh, what else can we do? Like once you've mastered the weddings and yeah. the birthday parties, you learn that you can probably write a script uh, right. you know, that can edit the things. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you figured out how to do the shots in right, such a way right, that you can right. cut down the yeah. editing time into such a short period of time. So mm-hmm. where a wedding will take you 12 hours to edit, maybe it's not taking you four hours to edit. And then you've got these six hours Mm-hmm. to now do the things that you mm-hmm. you need to do. But I know so for certain guys who make movies in Zimbabwe who definitely still do weddings <laughs> on the weekends. And okay. then the weddings are the things that they then, you, you know, they finance their mm-hmm. artistic side. Yeah. So now they have time mm-hmm. or the space to go and to do what they really love, to go shoot a show, to go mm-hmm. shoot a movie or to do a music video yeah. or to do some conceptual things. So I think... Depending, depending on who you are, like yeah. if you get stuck in the wedding item and you become like just my thing is weddings, shit. Ah, then <laughs> that's you. Cho- you've chosen your lane. <laughs> you've, you've, chosen, you've chosen your bed. And, uh, but I'd I'd say yeah, those things are cool. But just don't get don't get stuck in that mode. Mm-hmm.